He crossed the square and mounted the stone steps to the door of the church and entered. Sproul was standing in the vestibule. Long buttresses of light fell from the high windows on the western wall. There were no pews in the church, and the stone floor was heaped with the scalped and naked and partly eaten bodies of some 40 souls who barricaded themselves in this house of God against the heathen. The savages had hacked holes in the roof and shot them down from above and the floor was littered with arrow shafts where they'd snapped them off to get the clothes from the body. The altars had been hauled down and the tabernacle looted and the great sleeping god of the Mexicans routed from his golden cup. The primitive painted saints in their frames hung cocked on the walls as if an earthquake had visited and a dead Christ in a glass beer lay broken in the chancel floor. The murdered lay in a great pool of their communal blood. It had set up into a sort of pudding, crossed everywhere with the tracks of wolves or dogs, and along the edges it had dried and cracked into a burgundy ceramic. Blood lay in dark tongues on the floor, and blood grouted the flagstones, and it ran in the vestibule where the stones were cupped from the feet of the faithful and their fathers before them and it had threaded its way down the steps and dripped from the stones among the dark red tracks of the scavenger. Sproul turned and looked at the kid as if he'd know his thoughts, but the kid just shook his head. Flies clambered over the peeled and wigless skulls of the dead and flies walked on their shrunken eyeballs. Come on, said the kid. They crossed the square in the last of the light and went down the narrow street. In the doorway there lay a dead child with two buzzards sitting on it. Sproul shooed his good hand at the buzzards and they baited and hissed and flapped clumsily, but they did not fly. They set forth in the morning with first light while wolves slank from the doorways and dissolved in the fog of the streets. They went by the southwest road the way the savages had come. A little sandy stream, cottonwoods, three white goats. They waded a ford where women lay dead at their wash. They struggled all day across a terra damnata of smoking slag, passing from time to time the bloated shapes of dead mules or horses. By evening, they had drunk all the water they carried. They slept in the sand, and woke in the cool early morning dark and went on and they walked the cinderland till they were near to fainting. In the afternoon they came upon a careta in the trace, tilted on its tongue, the great wheels cut from rounds of a cottonwood trunk and pinned to the axle trees with tenons. They crawled under it for shade and slept until dark and went on. The rind of a moon that had been in the sky all day was gone, and they followed the trail through the desert by starlight, the Pleiades straight overhead and very small, and the great bear walking the mountains to the north. My arm stinks, said Sproul. What? I said my arm stinks. You want me to look at it? What for? You can't do nothing for it. Well. You suit yourself. I aim to, said Sproul. They went on. Twice in the night they heard the little prairie vipers rattle among the scrub, and they were afraid. With the dawn they were climbing among shale and windstone under the wall of a dark monocline where turrets stood like basalt prophets. And they passed by the side of the road little wooden crosses propped in cairns of stone where travelers had met with death. 